11 baby name trends you might regret. Hi, my name is Steph, I'm a name consultant, and today I'm going to react to an article from 2017 that gives us 11 baby name trends we might regret. And I'm wondering how upset I'm going to get over the course of this video. <laughs> to be honest, I'm going in a little bit defensive because I find so many of these articles about like don't do this with baby names and don't do that to be really upsetting and to be um, so off the mark. I don't know if they make up these rules or these trends to avoid so they get people to react to them because they certainly get me to react. So we'll see how I end this video. Right now I'm cool right now but I'm worried that I'm gonna get really annoyed by these name trends to avoid. I'm not gonna tell you who wrote the article or where it's from. You can easily find articles similar to this, but let's see how it holds up in 2023. Name trend number one, avoid trending names. Now we're actually starting strong because this is something that I personally chose to do with my three kids. I did not want a name that was super popular. I did not want them to be one of four in their class. Um, and I just really wanted something that would make them stand out and feel a little bit unique and feel a little bit special. That said, this is only if you don't love a trending name. If you love the name Olivia, well, use it. Can I find something similar to Emma or Liam or Jackson? If you can, maybe choose one of those. But if you keep coming back to this really popular name and you just love it and you know it's meant for your family and your child, use it. Who cares what anyone else thinks? But overall, I do agree with this one. If you can avoid a trending name, I just think there are so many cool names out there. Why not choose something a little bit different? Number two, avoid names that are also inanimate objects. Hard pass on this one. As a name consultant, I encourage you to look at inanimate objects and discover which ones would make great names. Honestly, these people lack whimsy, in my opinion. <laughs> names like, um, Clementine or Moon or Tide, Rainbow, Fern, Willow, use them! River, Lake, I mean those are less objects and more places in nature, but you know what I mean. I have no issue with this. I 100% disagree. I couldn't disagree more with this one. Getting a little bit heated already. Whimsical word names are my jam. Those are my thing. I encourage people to look out into the world and find inspiration in different places. Like, why not? Tell me what inanimate object you think would make a great name, okay? Put it in the comments. Number three is avoid names that are personality traits. So think of your grace, faith, joy, verity. What are some for boys? Sincere, justice, pax. Um, sage. The point of this article is saying that if you give your kid a virtuous type of name that they are going to resent it or feel like they have to live up to it. I think some of them might be easier to live up to than others and I do think you maybe want to take that into consideration. I'm a little bit 50-50 on this one because yes I see their point but I also think if you love a virtue name use a virtue name. Number four is names that need to be explained all the time. Right, this is might be an unpopular opinion, but I say pick the name that needs to be explained. My husband is from Scotland, his name is Ian, and it's actually the Gaelic version of Ian, so it's spelled with an extra I, so it's I-A-I-N. And it's always a conversation starter for us if we need one. Like, and people are always interested to talk about that and hear, oh, it's the Gaelic version of John, that's really cool. His dad's name is John. You're like, I, I don't know why, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother him at all. Their point is like names like heaven backwards, Nevaeh, that you have to explain every time. Well, then don't explain it. Personally, I don't see the big deal about having to explain your name. It gives you something to talk about. It makes you extra special. What do you guys think? I cannot believe this next one is on the list. It's names that name check your favorite rocker or musician. Is this a joke? Musician inspired names are huge right now. Now is this, this is the dated part of the article? I don't know. I cannot believe it. Think of Jagger and Hendrix and Lennon and Jovi and Stevie. Like all of these names are amazing and come from your favorite musician. I'm, I'm like, how is that not a good idea? That's a great way to find inspiration. You, you know how many people are like, we really love music and Bon Jovi's our favorite artist and so we chose Jovi for our little girl and we just love it and it's special and it reminds us of Bon Jovi and it's... What is the big deal? Like, I don't understand this one at all. Like, not at all, don't get it, completely disagree. Name consultant disagrees. 
I think you should be looking to your favorite things for inspiration. Give a piece of yourself to your kid's name. People love to share why they were named after a certain musician. They might even grow up to love that music as well. Number six is traditional names with a pronunciation twist. I don't like where this is going, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So what are you saying? Like if Alicia is, is pronounced Alicia or something, that is, that is not okay. There's a little girl in my child's, one of my child's classes and her name is pronounced Amalia. I would have seen her name and pronounced Amalia. But it's very easy to learn the different pronunciation that works better for her culture. I believe she's Greek, not totally sure. I don't even know where this one's going. They're basically saying, don't pick a name that has an odd pronunciation or don't pronounce your child's name in a different way than is intuitive, which I completely disagree with. If that's what's best for your family, if that's how you see the name. I actually did this with my daughter potentially because her name is Oriana and a lot of people want to say Oriana. Since I gave her the two N's at the end of her name instead of one N, I think people are more likely to say Oriana, but I pronounce it Oriana. She pronounces it Oriana. My husband, his is like a blend of the two, but um, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Let's move on. This one's a terrible take. Pronounce your kid's name the way you want to pronounce it, okay? Number seven is names that are traditional but trick you at the last minute. Trick you? What is this? What are they talking about? I'm so confused. Trick you? Their examples are Brandon instead of Brendan. What? Both of those are very traditional names. Brendan and Brandon. E or A. Joss instead of Josh. Caden instead of Aiden. Mariah instead of Maria. This is possibly the worst take ever. Those are all different names you're saying. Joss is one of my favorite J names and Josh is actually my brother's name. <laughs> I mean, what is the problem with the, like, there, there's no trick. They're just two different names. There's no trick. Like, I would be so bored if everybody was like, well, we have to pick Maria. Like, have a Mariah. Instead of Evelyn, maybe you want to have Everly. They're all, they're all good. Your names are great. I love your choices. I just love to validate you all, please. <laughs> that is the worst one yet. That is the worst take. Zero out of 10 from a name consultant. <laughs> Number eight is literary references that no one will get because it's from a different generation. <laughs> no. Like, again, like your parents like a certain musician, they might like a certain book and it's special to them and they name you a character from that book. How is that bad? That's great. That's wonderful. Those are great places to find inspiration. Yes, I'm getting angry. I have always loved Shakespeare play inspired names. <laughs> so maybe that I have always loved Shakespeare characters inspired from plays. I have a degree in acting and I'm an actor and I just, I love Shakespeare, but those are a little bit out of my generation. Wouldn't you say William Shakespeare's time? Come on, like, what does that matter? If you wanna name your child a character from your favorite book, I say go for it, do it. This is also a terrible take. Whew, we started strong, it's getting worse. I would say we're definitely, we're on the decline now. I, I, I don't know where they're reaching for these, but it's not good, it's not good. <laughs> I'm so glad names have evolved since then, but this article is making me stressed out. Number nine, boy names for girls and girl names for boys. Names don't have a gender. Names are genderless. You can give your child whatever name you want. We are done defining people's gender. We're done defining things as like specifically boy only or girl only. Whew. This, okay, now we have the new winner of the most frustrating one. I do have a lot of teachers in my family and they say things like, "You, when you get a class list now, you cannot tell how many girls or boys you have based on the names only because they're all like, Logan could be a boy or a girl these days, right? And I, I understand that it's tricky, but like we just need to add more columns of like, what do you identify as? Male, female, non-binary, like gender fluid, I don't know. like. My heart's racing at this point because this is archaic to me. When I first started my TikTok account, I would categorize everything by boy and girl lists. And sometimes I still do. I'm Sometimes I'm like, okay, well this works better for girls, this is for boys. Sometimes it makes sense, but I have since changed my format to be separating names by whether they are popular or uncommon. And you get to decide if you think River is better suited for a boy or a girl. What do you guys think? Can it get worse? Number 10 is kooky names inspired by your favorite celebrity. So what are you saying? Like, you know, remember when Gwyneth Paltrow named her daughter Apple and people went crazy? 
that's an inanimate object name. Would you consider it now? Is it less kooky to you? Um, yeah, I mean, look at the look at the Kardashian Jenner family. You're gonna see a lot more heirs <laughs> as the years go on now that um, Kylie has announced her son's name is heir. For this, I think we are always going to look to celebrities and the people in the media for name inspiration, and that's okay. Like, I think a lot of times celebrities get to push the envelope further because they're supposed to do things a little bit different than the general public, right? They're supposed to kind of stand out and offer a fresh take on everything. And so their baby names tend to be a little bit more odd and a little bit more eccentric and a little bit more uncommon. And I think it's okay if we look to those, especially if you like those names as well, why not use them? And finally, the last name trend that you might regret, names that come with a built-in insult playground. Huh? Names that come with a built-in insult play. So these are names that are gonna get you made fun of. Now, my take on bullying for names is teach your kids not to bully. Let me say it again. Teach your kids not to bully. That is the first step, right? Teach your children that we don't make fun of people for things they can't change, like their name, right? A child is given their name by their parents. You don't make fun of them. So we should be teaching our children, not placating to this idea that we have to make everything cookie cutter and simple and easily digestible so that no one makes fun of it. Now, here's the examples they give. I will share these. Bart, fart, no, I mean, no. Bart is not my favorite name, but I would not choose it just because it rhymes with fart. The name Dick um, is a nickname of Richard. I, I, now that one, it's become such a slang for a body part that I can definitely see why you might avoid that particular name. There are some that I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. You, you can find a way to make fun of anybody's name. Anybody, I promise you. I was made fun of for the name Stephanie step on me like there's always something and this is like such a boring vanilla name <laughs> i mean i love my name <laughs> i do love my name but i also love my kids on common names but so let go of that let go of that pressure that you have to find a name that nobody's going to make fun of because it doesn't exist it doesn't exist and so if your kids see you making fun of someone's name or making fun of someone's appearance or something they can't control then your kids are gonna do that. So that's where it starts, is teaching our kids not to bully. I still think this article is very dated and I would not recommend that anyone read it or follow it at all. Um, but <laughs> I hope you had fun and learned a few things about names. And I hope you're inspired to, whether you're choosing a name for yourself or choosing a name for a child or a pet or a plant, that you pick a name that is special to you and that comes from your interests and that is important and that, a name that you love. I hope that you do pick a name that you love. I don't think we need this many rules around naming. I wanna know in the comments which name trend do you guys think is the worst and Thank you for watching my video. Hope you stick around. I post a lot of shorts. And um, if you do need some name consulting help, I have some links in my bio and I can help you with that because sometimes you just need a little bit of inspiration. You wanna see a more uncommon option or you want my advice and you just wanna know like, what do you think of this name? I'm here for that too. Like I love talking about names day in and day out. I do it every day. I look at names every single day. So I'd love to take a look at yours. So. Anyway, thanks for being here, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I almost forgot my sign-off. Happy naming.